Hi everyone, welcome to Animation Juice. My name is Richard and it's Move It Monday, which means it's time for another animation tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to animate a bouncing box using all of the bouncing ball uh, fundamentals that we've been learning in the previous few episodes. And all of this is moving towards animating a, a flower sack, which is like a combination of a box and a ball. Um, and it's really a quintessential uh, learning tool for all uh, animators. So uh, let's jump in. Hey guys, so here we are in Flash and like I say, in this episode we're going to talk about how to animate a bouncing box using the exact same principles we've been learning and talking about in the previous episodes where we've been animating bouncing balls. And what I've done is I've, I've set up some keyframes for this bouncing box. So there it's just uh, in its static position and it goes into a squash position. Then he's stretching upwards, reaching the top of the arc, and then stretching back down to the ground and settling. Now, these are the exact principles that we've been talking about with the bouncing ball. And let me just turn off the box and show you with the ball, it's exactly the same. So we have Static position, squash, the up, top of the arc, the stretch, which is contact in the ground, it's the extreme stretch, and then a settle. These are the exact same, we have them at the same time, you can see what's happening. Squash, stretch up, up at the top, hang time, stretch back down again, contacting the earth squash again and then just a little settle so it's the exact uh, same principles all that we're doing now is we're progressing it one step further where uh, we're animating with a slightly ever so slightly more uh, complex mass in that we've got this box you know it's not just a it's really easy to squash and stretch a ball it, um, when you're drawing it or even uh, animating in flash but when you have a slightly more complex form um, it might be easier it, it's you sometimes lose your way with animating but the key is just to remember those uh, basic principles and you really can't go wrong uh, so what I'm going to do in this tutorial is we've got our keyframes and I'm going to in between these keyframes keeping in mind the squash and stretch that we talked about the timing principle the spacing uh, and arcs all of the fundamentals that we've been dealing with uh, in the previous episodes as you can see and in, in the uh, top of the screen well wherever your timeline is the keyframes are all successive keyframes there, there's no timing being added to these keyframes they're just successive frames and you can see that if I um, you see they just this is running through really 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 fast so there's currently no timing and that's the first thing that we're gonna uh, look at and then talk about the other principles as we go so this is gonna be quite a um, organic tutorial but we'll see how it goes and I'm just going to talk you through my thought processes when applying the basic principles to slightly more complex forms. Not much more complex, just slightly more complex. And the first thing that I'm going to do is start to time the animation out. Um, and the way that I'm going to do that is click on the first frame click on, on, on the specifically click on the red um, slider so the red scrubber thing and hit F5 and we're just going to roughly start adding a bit of timing to this um, so there's going to be some just pressing F5 to add more keyframes uh, just 
this rinse needs. So let's just see what that looks like. Feels good. Feels good already. I mean, I've already um, dictated some of the spacing, as you can see. If we turn on our onion skin tool, you can see that I've already put two frames quite close together in the top of the arc. Knowing what we know now about spacing, that's because the the closer you space your drawings, the slower a drawing, uh, the, the slower a motion appears to um, to feel, and. Obviously, at the top of the arc, there's lots of momentum. Gravity is starting to pull it back down to Earth, and so that's why it's, it's, um, it feels slower at the top, which is what we want. So that feels really good already. There's no tweens or there's no in betweens yet. It's just we're just timing out those basic keyframes. And you'll notice that in the top left corner, I've got this uh, greyed out box. It's a, in fact, it's just a duplicate of the first frame of the animation. The reason that I've got that there is because when I'm deforming the box into all of its squash frames, you see there, when I'm stretching them out again for the stretch frames, you know, and various, various, you know, just pulling them about, I want to bear in mind the volume. Uh, and so having this, um, ghosted out box at the top left just re keeps reminding me of the volume the size of this uh, box so that when I am deforming it I'm doing it faithfully it's not losing volume sometimes the tendency is when you uh, deform uh, masses the tendency is more often than not to lose volume it is for me anyway I often when I'm animating sometimes the, the mass gets smaller and smaller as we go through the animation. So having that box up there just helps to um, remind me that when I'm drawing these, when I'm deforming these shapes, uh, to maintain the, the same volume throughout. The second thing that I'm going to do is just start to uh, in between this guy. Let's just turn on our onion skin. Now the onion skin tool like I say, is this first it's purple, it's the purple, it's the mini purple square on top of the mini white square and if you hover over it, it says onion skin. It's the bottom of your timeline. Uh, I'm working in CS5, yours might look slightly different in later versions, but it, it's invariably found at the base of your timeline. When you click it, you get these brackets. I just want to pull these brackets so it's just showing me the first and second and I'm gonna hit F6, about halfway between the first frame and the second frame. And that's just gonna duplicate the first frame. And I'm gonna delete that. Turn it on your skin back on. And I'm just gonna draw Quite loosely, what this box might look like as is deforming and this is going to be quite loose. You can always tidy it up later, just keep it loose and we're just trying at this point, we're just trying to get the we're just trying to get the motion happening. Now I'm gonna spend a lot of time just dragging back between these first. Now to me that's already feeling like he's the top half of his the top half of the box is coming down too quickly. So I'm just going to rub that out. You, 
can see how it's slightly more uh, it's slightly more tricky than with the bouncing ball because really that's just in varying degrees of um, roundedness to ovalness depending on um, it's squashing or stretching but with more, slightly more complex form um, it's just gonna take a little bit more time figuring out how what the squash frame looks like you know it's gonna be a squash just uh, figuring out exactly how it works so Thinking about the arc right now, the arc that this as it's bending forward is we've got to remember our arc between if we just track the corners of this box. So let's track this uh, front corner. You know, it's, it's coming down. Can't really see that. It's sort of coming down a bit like it's. We want to make sure that like, the corners are, are tracking along nice curves. And you can see, I just need to stretch this um, top of the box out because it's not quite tracking accurately. See that I'm really, I'm just at this point. I'm just trying to make sure that the volume is remaining the same. Okay. Now I'm thinking automatically at this point. I'm thinking how the, is how does this particular mass, this box deform into a squash position. Now you could, let me just quickly draw, you could, um, that's the, that's the first frame of the, this box. We could just animate it sort of really like squashing, uh, just like puffing out. Um, this would also be an equally valid um, squash frame. You just have to be careful that it does look like it's not losing volume. That looks okay, doesn't it? In fact, we can just uh, just show it next to the here. Um, you know, that would be an equally valid squash frame. But it's just really a personal choice that I've gone with a more humanoid cube. Humanoid cuboid. <laughs> Humanoid cuboid. Um, I maybe that's just my natural tendency. I always tend to think of um, animating humans, and so I always thought that this box is bending his legs. He's almost like he's got knees, almost like the magic carpet from Aladdin. So that's my. It's more of a, a personal choice as to how I've squashed the box. It doesn't. But both, both this and this are valid squash frames. It really is just a. Uh, personal choice or a, a director's uh, choice as to uh, how you know the principle is is squash and stretch so 
And that's the most important thing, really. Okay, so we've in between, just between the first frame and the second frame, just slap bang in the middle. We can start to adjust the spacing if needed later on, but for now that feels okay. So let's do exactly the same thing. Let's keyframe between here and here. Now I know that frame five, frame six, frame seven, frame eight are are only going to be variations of this same pose. I mean, really, all that I'm really going to probably do is squash the box like that. Just um, he's already in the pose, and now we're just um, animating within that pose. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to put the keyframe slap bang in the middle. I'm going to put it one frame before here. You see. Already I'm starting to think about spacing and thinking well this is actually a really this is probably the extreme stretch just after the extreme um, squash so actually I probably want this as the next frame but I don't want it as high as that I want it to be a little bit lower you know And then in between it getting into this one. So I'm going to put a, a, a keyframe slap bang in the middle of here and here. So just there is fine. Delete that. Turn on the onion skin and just drag the brackets to show me these two images. So let's just carry on animating we'll just let's try and find what the next in between looks like So that's starting to feel good. So I'll just sort of tidy that one up a little bit. Just a second up the line. You can, the most important thing is the movement. And 
And I would say even that frame has lost too much volume from the main, so you don't be afraid to change your keyframes. You, your keyframes are really just guides. Um, This is being informed just by the volume. I'm just thinking about the volume of this shape. And that's just going to be too much. You can see I'm really just, it's really just, in fact, what I'm going to do is copy this frame. Delete that one, paste it in place, which is to paste a frame in place, uh, hit Command Shift V. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to deform the same image. That's looking good. That is looking good. We just slowly put in some more in betweens, in between the ones that we already started with. So let's just finish up. Actually, this one. Let's just quickly. So let's just finish up doing the. Uh,
Let's see what that looks like. So, that is feeling really nice. The whole thing is working. So now it's just a case of going through and doing another pass, another refinement pass, just a little bit of cleanup. settle in. Just hit that extreme, bang, and then I want you to recall straight away. Bang. You can only hit a lot within the poses. Yeah, it's going to be more, but
Men det er ikke engang, jeg ved, at jeg ved, at jeg ved, Okay, so let's just uh, take stock of where we are. So I'm gonna, what is that's looking, that's feeling and looking good. So, so let's just finish up with our, all our in-betweens and then we'll tweak the spacing a little bit and then we'll call this one done. Now you can see what I'm doing here, just to manually ease these frames. You see that I duplicate the frame that I want the uh, spacing to be weighted towards and just drag it to the frame before by holding Alt and just dragging it. And then now all I've got to do is just tweak that value slightly and I know that it's going to be mostly weighted towards where we're going to. Actually, what I want to do is I just want to hit keyframe here and just have this one just really easing out. And a really easy way is I'm not, I'm not looking to. I, I, I really, to get this to get this spacing happening as I want it, so we really want to ease out, slow out of the first keyframe. All you do is grab the first keyframe, hold Alt, and drag it to the next frame, and then you can use that as your base. And you know it's going to be very close to. You know it's going to be very close to the. the 
first frame. And again, we want this to be so close to this frame here, I'm just going to barely nudge it. I mean, you can try and draw, redraw, but it's the, the keyframes are so close together, I much prefer to duplicate the previous frame and um, transform it um, ever so slightly. Because you can get much more accurate, much more delicate frames, and it's a little slightly quicker than redrawing the whole thing. So let's just look at the spacing for this one. You know, it's weighted towards the top there, and then it just and then it just snaps down. I do like that. I'm going to keep that. I like the snap. It's, I do. I like the snap. It's vital. It's got a nice vitality to it. There. So we've just got a couple of little in betweens to do. See if we can just get away with no. <laughs> Ish. Let's try the other one.
see how the head came around first and the feet are catching up. Hey, well, let's get rid of that one. Now that feels very nice. You can get away with quite a lot of snap between... You see how there's a big jump between that and that. Make sure that this long elongated stretch frame is in touch with the ground, contacting the ground, and then the one immediately after that, between here and here, make that your squash frame. Okay. Um, and as long as you put sufficient uh, settling, as long as you, between this big snap, point, 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 you've got enough settling, it's going to feel really nice. And at this point, this is where you would go in and, you know, you can clean it up. It doesn't really make a difference to the overall feeling of the movement, the tidying up part of it. It is to the last thing to do. The main thing is getting using the knowledge, the, uh, the squash stretch, the timing you can see. Let's look at the timing of this. Spacing rather. Spacing. You can see how there's a lot of space at the, uh, there's a, a lot of frames bunched together at the top of the uh, jump and there's a lot of frames bunched together at uh, either end, the anticipation and the settle. But in between those, getting from uh, top to bottom to from bottom to top to bottom again, it's one frame. It's one frame. Um, there. Bang, bang. As long as you've got sufficient settle, you can get away. And it's not about really getting away with anything, it's about having that snap. You want uh, some nice as a vitality to your animation, doesn't mean that everything is using being aware of spacing um, is going to add a real vitality to your work. Um, making sure that you are bunching your frames together in the anticipation and then zipping through, just having one frame and then oof, straight to the top, bunching together, space the, gradually space them out again and then snap, bang, bang and then settling in with a lot of frames. And that is how you use the knowledge of the... Hang on, let me see if we can make this a bit bigger. Uh, view, zoom in. There. So that is how you use the knowledge of the bouncing ball, the fundamentals encapsulating the bouncing ball, the timing, the spacing, squash and stretch, your arcs, and um, thinking about anticipation, when, whenever, whatever movement you're doing, anticipation being uh, the, the, the squash, the bending over before the jump of this. All of those fundamental principles which we looked at in the bouncing ball, can be applied to any mass, any shape, and should be applied to any mass and shape. The only thing that gets slightly more difficult is the um, construction of the mass itself. So in this case, we've added slightly more complexity to the mass in that it's a uh, cuboid um, as opposed to a generic ball, which is very easy to visually squash and stretch. It's just uh, making it drawing it from you know, a regular circle and just stretching it to an oval in either the horizontal for the squash and the vertical for the, um, the stretch. And so if, if you take those fundamental animation principles, you stand in good stead whenever you come to um, animating complex masses. The, you can see how scrappy this is. Um, the individual frames are quite... Could do with the cleanup, 
but the overall movement won't change very much at all. The feeling of the movement, the appeal of the movement, it feels very alive, very vital. So we're going to take this one step further next week and we're going to combine this box and the bouncing ball and we're going to stick them together and what that's going to make is uh, the, the universal, the ubiquitous flower sack uh, which, is, uh, which has been a, uh, a learning tool for years and years and years to progress the learning of the animation principles one step further again and you can do so much with the uh, flower sack you can get so much you can get as much personality in the flower sack as you can in a full bodied figure and that's where we're gonna uh, that's what we're gonna start to look at in the next few episodes and it's gonna be really exciting one of my favorite um, was one of my favorite parts of the, the learning uh, process in animation and we're just slowly building on these principles as we're going um, so I hope you've enjoyed this episode so that's it for this episode I hope you've learned a lot and it's shown you how it doesn't matter what you're animating what the um, shapes are what whatever the the mass is the principles really are the same the squash the stretch the time and the spacing the arcs it's all uh, universal so I hope you've enjoyed it if you did enjoy this video make sure to let me know by leaving a like and a comment and make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest videos as they come out so until next week's episode of movement monday have a great week and i'll see you later